Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Triangles Meditation Group. Today is Monday, January 17th, 2022. And a warm welcome to all of you. As we do each week, let's just begin with a brief moment of silence, followed by a sounding of what we call the noontime recollection. We know, O Lord of life and love, about the need. Touch our hearts anew with love, that we too may love and give. Our work together each week has a twofold purpose to introduce the work of triangles to people who are new to it and to aid them in the forming of triangles and also to provide a platform for those people who are already members of triangles to come together each week and participate in a meditative visualization in the support and strengthening of the planetary network. Triangles is a visualization technique using the power of thought and prayer to uplift and transform consciousness. The work establishes lines of lighted loving communication between three people who agree to vivify that triangular link every day. <clears throat> three people linked together as a triangle of light, mentally, spiritually, and in a spirit of goodwill to all humanity. And this triangle is then placed within the larger planetary network of triangles. And as the network is visualized, the great invocation, a world prayer, is sounded in order to release and circulate spiritual energies throughout the network. And Triangles need only take a few minutes each day, and it can therefore be fit into even the busiest of schedules. And so if you're new to this work and resonate with this idea of planetary service through the power of thought and visualization, please do place your name in the chat box, and hopefully two other people on the webinar will agree to form a triangle with you and then you'll receive more information from Lucy's Trust about the work. So today, um, the Capricorn full moon, uh, the Lucy's Trust will be holding its monthly full moon meeting this evening at 6.30 p.m. So we encourage any of you who can participate to join. We have a nice opportunity this evening to be in our meditation at the exact time of the full moon which occurs at 6.48 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this evening. So we hope you can join us. And for our webinar today, we have a returning guest, Michelle Pineda. And Michelle has been a long time student of the Ageless Wisdom for over 30 years. And she has an interest in Theosophy, Anthroposophy, and the Rosicrucian tradition. And um, her professional background is 40 of 40 years includes a specialty in nonprofit and governmental accounting, finance, and oper op operational processes. And Michelle will be sharing with us concerning the theme the triangle, causes and effects, a practical approach to manifesting the kingdom of God on earth. And she'll be leading us in a visualization as part of her presentation. So I look forward to hearing from you. Michelle. And now, as we do each week, let's work together with a brief visualization. And we begin by linking with one another, placing our focus on the mental plane, visualizing the planet as a sphere of lighted energy.
and visualize within that sphere a triangle. This is the triangle of the three primary planetary centers. Shambhala, the planetary head center. The spiritual hierarchy, the planetary heart. And humanity, the planetary throat center. Visualize the circulation of energies flowing in all directions around the triangle, from point to point, merging and blending the three points, filling the triangle with light. Now superimposed upon that triangle, visualize a five-pointed star. This is the star of the world teacher, linking east and west, past and future, radiating the energy of love wisdom. At each point of the star, the sphere of his activity stands an outpost of his consciousness, the five planetary centers. Visualize the energies radiating forth from the center of the star through the five points. London, Darjeeling, New York, Geneva, Tokyo, Visualize these outpouring energies enlivening small groups gathering everywhere, aiding them to focus and direct the energies into the consciousness of all humanity, solving its problems, creating right human relations, restoring peace on earth. Project a line of lighted energy towards the spiritual hierarchy and sound together the mantra. Radiance we are and power. We stand forever with our hands stretched out, linking the heavens and the earth, the inner world of meaning and the subtle world of glamour. We reach into the light and bring it down to meet the need. We reach into the silent place and bring from thence the gift of understanding. Thus with the light we work and turn the darkness into day. Today is the day of safeguarding of the Capricorn full moon. This full moon is one of potency and strength, 
facilitating the ability to penetrate into the highest center of the spiritual will, thereby as a consequence, stimulating the release of goodwill in the world. Capricorn is associated with the ascension to the mountain top and the strength and determination necessary to achieve this goal. It's interesting to note how the spiritual hierarchy of the planet was said to have taken a keen interest in humanity's attempts to scale the highest peak, Mount Everest, which was finally achieved in 1953 by Edmund Hillary from New Zealand and Tenzing Norge from Nepal. And this was accomplished at the time of the Gemini full moon. This outer event was said to be a symbol of humanity's ability to ascend into the light and relative glory of the new civilization. And now at a higher turn of the spiral, a new Netflix documentary entitled 14 Peaks is gaining much attention. The film highlights the strength and determination of the Nepalese mountaineer Nirmal Purja and his team as they climbed not only one peak, but rather all of the 14 planetary peaks over 1000 meters high. And they did so within a record time of six months and six days. The previous record for scaling the 14 peaks was seven years, and that was accomplished by Reinhold Mesner. A significant portion of the footage in the film was taken by the expedition team itself, and the majesty and awe-inspiring Himalayan mountain ranges are wondrous to behold particularly as they are accompanied by incredibly powerful music, which brings their awesomeness to life. Some and all along the way, the climbers face brutal cold, wind, storms, and the constant threat of avalanches. I thought the film presented a powerful symbol of the qualities needed by those on the spiritual path. The film detailed the challenges that had to be overcome all along the way. There was the long preparatory work, the sacrifice and the long hours of grueling training and discipline that was undertaken for years. But the challenges were not only physical, they were also emotional and mental as well for everyone told him that his goal was impossible. But he always held to a different view and came to call his journey and his goal mission possible. He said the lesson he wanted to share with the world, particularly with the Nepalese mountaineers, was to not be afraid to dream big and that when you have such dreams, it doesn't matter where you come from. For decades, the Nepalese Sherpas accompanied Western climbers, whereas Nurma said, I want to represent the Nepalese climbing community. As I said, he faced many challenges in his life. As the third son in a family with little means, he was traditionally supposed to support his mother. He had a good job in social special services in the UK and his family was against his following what they thought was a selfish dream. And he had to make this decision at a time when his mother was also very ill. But his wife knew how much this dream meant to him. And she saw his determination and was fully supportive of his decisions all along the way, even when they couldn't get funding for the project and had to take out another mortgage on their modest home. But even having taken that step, he still needed additional funding. He tried everything through the normal channels and nothing worked. Little money was forthcoming and discouragement did arise. That was when he decided to reach out to the global mountaineering community via social media and word spread quickly and the funds were made available. 
the global community was tremendously supportive as well when he was later being denied a visa by China that he needed to climb the final peak in Tibet. Again, the global community came to the rescue by sending thousands of communications to the Chinese government. And the pressure was so great that they finally relented and let Nimja into his country, into their country. The challenges of the climb were highlighted in the documentary, but so was the relentless optimism, good humor, and camaraderie among the team. At one point, Nimja slipped and started falling down a huge icy slope at great neck speed. Seemingly out of nowhere, he was able to grab a rope that saved his life. He said this was a horrible experience and shook his confidence massively. And he struggled within himself, but he didn't allow others to see his weakness. One of the peaks, Annapurna, is so treacherous that out of one of, out of every three climbers who makes it to the summit, there's one who dies. When they approached that climb, they met other climbers along the way who were about to turn back because of bad weather conditions. But after dancing, and quite frankly, partying hard all night, they were able to convince the group to keep going and they all reached the summit. As they descended the peak the next day, it was realized that one of the climbers from the other group had been left behind. Nimja and a couple others from his group went up to find him with no extra oxygen of their own to spare and tremendous fatigue, but they were able to rescue him. The team rescued other lost and sick climbers along the way of their journeys up the various peaks, and they were always willing to sacrifice their own ambitions and indeed their own lives in order to save others. One such climber, however, was not so lucky. When the team found him, he was severely ill, having run out of oxygen. They shared the little oxygen they had with him and called for more from other climbers who were in a camp below, but no one offered any of their oxygen and the climber died in Ninja's arms. Of climbing, Ninja said, your soul becomes part of the mountain. It makes you feel alive. And he always said to himself, I'm not going to die today, maybe tomorrow, but not today. He said, the mountain doesn't care if you're white, black, weak, or strong. It's one rule for everybody. If you give up, however, you die. Perhaps the biggest challenge was the approach to a mountain called K2, the most treacherous of all the peaks. He began to doubt because everyone else, all the other climbers had given up. He said of himself, my biggest strength is that I have no fear. He said to him, climbing is like meditation. He said, you have to ask yourself, do you really want this from your heart? Is it for self glory or is it for something bigger? It may seem impossible to the rest of the world, but that doesn't mean it's impossible to you. You can inspire the world. And when he reached the final summit, he called his mom. And so this final slide is really a magnificent illustration of humanity's progress into greater light, as the Tibetan said, the light of the new civilization. He said that Hillary, Hillary's ascent to the summit in 1953 was a symbol of that. And this, these are the mountaineers that are ascending to the summit 68 years down the line in May 19, 2021. So we can see the progress that humanity has made. And on this Capricorn full moon day, I thought this brief synopsis of this incredible feat provides an apt symbol of the path and the qualities needed 
to seek the way. Let's now work with our meditation, focusing ourselves as a group on the mental plane. Breathing together, linking with all other triangles workers throughout the world. Project a line of lighted energy towards the highest center Shambhala and sound together the affirmation of will. In the center of the will of God, I stand. Not shall deflect my will from his. I implement that will by love. I turn towards the field of service. I, the triangle divine, work out that will within the square and serve my fellow men. Using the creative imagination link with two other points of light to create a triangle of light. Visualize the triangle in which you are working as an essential part of the radiant worldwide triangles network. Hold the consciousness immersed within the light of the group soul, the heart of love which underlies and infuses the network. Now lift the consciousness to the world teacher who stands as the heart of love at the center of the spiritual hierarchy and also at the heart of each triangle. Visualize the energies of love, light, and goodwill circulating in and around the Triangles Network.
Visualize these energies unifying and eliminating all divisions within humanity, healing and transforming human consciousness, and establishing right human relationships. Sound together the mantra of unification. The sons of men are one, and I am one with them. I seek to love, not hate. I seek to serve and not exact due service. I seek to heal, not hurt. Let pain bring due reward of light and love. Let the soul control the outer form and life and all events and bring to light the love that underlies the happenings of the time. Let vision come and insight. Let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate and outer cleavages be gone. Let love prevail. Let all people love. Visualize the whole planet alight 
with triangles. See new triangles being formed everywhere. Distribution. Prior to sounding the great invocation, let's pause to consider the work to be done by the words as they're poured out. And as we repeat each stanza, let's visualize the network acting as a link between the world of the spiritual realities and humanity. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May the coming one return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills. The purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. Thank you, everyone. And now we come to the final part of our program, wherein we'll hear from Michelle. Uh, I have to find your uh, one second, please. So we'll unmute your microphone. There you go. And if Michelle, you could share your screen now. There you go. Great. Yes, can you hear me? Okay, yeah. great, great. Yeah. Let me share my screen. All right, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Very good, let me put the slideshow on. 
All right, everyone. Thank you for your time. Um, what I'd like to talk about today is the triangle as a geometric formula for the representation of the number three. And what I'm trying to say there, and where I'm going to go in this presentation, is how the triangle and the number three is used to create causes in the higher spiritual realms and how those causes come to manifest as effects in the world of men. And in essence, a practical approach to the manifestation of the kingdom of God on earth. So if you look at this chart here, you can see this formula um, is stated in many different ways, depending on the faith, uh, one's worldview, or one's philosophy. But one thing is certain and one thing is true is that regardless of the philosophy or the faith, uh, they all follow the same esoteric rule and the same esoteric truth. And that is, is that God manifests in three aspects, all equally divine, all equally important, all doing their part in the expression of divinity through the planes of existence. So let me just go through this chart for a few moments and, and to share with you what, what I'm saying as far as this formula, <clears throat> excuse me. And I'll take the first row there, which is a representation of the Christian faith with respects to the three aspects. So um, the first aspect is the father, the third aspect is the mother, and then you have the second aspect is the son. If you combine the father with the mother, you come up with a unique second aspect, which is the son, if that makes sense. And I'll give you another uh, example. If you come about midway down on the chart, you see positive polarity, negative polarity, and a neutral polarity. If you combine both those polarities, you get light. So a very simple expression of that is when one uh, flips a switch and turns on the light, you have the manifestation of divinity occurring through that action of turning on a light. So what I'd like to hone in on as far as uh, this ancient wisdom teachings is I wanna focus on uh, the Christ teachings as it relates to the three aspects. And then I'll move in to the Russia Crucian philosophy. And um, after that, I'll share some practical applications in daily life to the manifestation of these three aspects. As profound, as esoteric as they may appear, they're very practical. And I'll, I'll show you some easy ways uh, how to implement them in your daily life. And then we'll move on to a simple yet powerful meditation and then move on to question and comments. So moving on to the teachings of the Christ, and in my opinion, this is one of the most profound, one of the most powerful uh, expressions of the first aspect in the, in the Christian Bible. And it is a line from the Lord's Prayer, and it states, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And you can see in those words that it's indeed the purpose of the plan for earth and a very powerful mantra. And actually that's one of my personal favorites. And, you know, in times of crisis, I do call upon that uh, in my day as, as things go on. And it helps me remember who's in charge, but that's indeed a very powerful uh, statement of that first aspect or the will. <clears throat> um, what I feel to be a very good um, expression of the active intelligence or third aspect is the definition of faith, which is now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And if you read through that, you, you see that that is a thought form building, that you have created a thought, but it's yet to be manifested. Uh, and those are in those final words, it says the evidence of things not seen. So if you combine this aspect as expressed through, through this statement and the will aspect that I just spoke of, you have manifestation. You will faith and it becomes conviction and will into manifestation. And then when you combine those two, three, you come with the second aspect, which is love wisdom. And for me, this is one of the most beautiful um, expressions of that aspect 
in the Christian Bible. And it says, ye have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them. Again, it's about redemption. When you combine spirit with matter or spirit with form, you come with redemption. You spirit redeems uh, matter. So that's the manifestation of the first and third aspects. You get that of love wisdom, which is the second aspect. So moving on to a totally different philosophy. And as I go through it, you'll see it, it speaks the same language. And this uh, is the Russian philosophy, specifically the law of the triangle. And what this law states is that it is based on the fact that a perfect and complete manifestation can occur only if two conditions of complementary or opposing natures come together. And again, if you look at that first bullet, it's the opposing forces that are the positive and negative polarities or the first and the third aspects. And the coming together or union of the opposing polarities creates a third condition or a separate distinct entity that is neutral. And there you have the second aspect. Um, a numeric expression um, of this law is uh, one plus one equals two. That, that is a you know, the numeric law of this expression. And then also de demonstrates the law of duality. And uh, moving on to the Rosicrucian uh, philosophy, and it states that all manifestations obeys this law. And that uh, one can create their own causes and own effect by demonstrating and by implementing this law by visualizing a triangle. And in visualizing the triangle, your base of the triangle would be uh, the positive and negative polarity. And then the apex would be uh, your effect or that second aspect. And uh, as what holds true with all um, expressions through the Russian Prussian philosophy, as well as, as the Masonic philosophy, it has ended with the mantra, so mode it be. And uh, so mode it be is a very powerful mantra of the first and seventh ray. And its original uh, translation is so be it, which comes from some uh, ancient Masonic manuscript. And it's also um, spoken of in the Alice Bailey teachings. And, and uh, one quote uh, from the Seven Rays, Volume 5, is the symbol of the will and the purpose of the Most High. And in our visualization today, we are going to end uh, with the mantra, so mode it be. I think it's uh, fitting that, um, as Kathy had stated, you know, with today being the full moon of Capricorn, uh, which is a first and third and seventh ray constellation that um, uh, so mode it be you know, ending with that mantra would fit nicely with the energies of the, of the Capricornian energies. <clears throat> and then just bringing it down to earth, uh, just some practical applications as it relates uh, to the three aspects. And I'll speak to leadership qualities, development, team building, uh, forming groups, and then the manifestation of money for hierarchical work. So uh, the, the first item is leadership qualities. And in that in itself, that is a, a first ray or a first aspect as far as leadership. And there are many trainings and many books on leadership development. But in a nutshell, they come down to these four bullet points. And that is uh, you need a clear vision and long view and fear, fearlessness and determination. And as you can see, those two bullets or a representation of the first aspect. And then the third bullet is effective communication. A good leader is charismatic, magnetic, and has an ethical quality. And you can see that's an expression of the second aspect. And then you have the third aspect, creative implementation empowerment. So whatever the vision is, at some point it needs to manifest as, as a creative expression. So in leadership qualities, you easily see the three aspects working out. <clears throat> and team building is, is another practical application for, for this law. And as far as team building, that in itself is a second aspect. So with 
with all the teachings and all the books out there on team building, you have three fundamental uh, items that make effective team building. You have first uh, purpose, a group focus, which is again, the first aspect, effective communication within the group. You need collaboration and the sharing ideas. Again, a second, a second aspect. And then you need to implement uh, the purpose. You know, there needs to be a positive outcome as, as a result of the team building. Again, that's the third aspect or the creative. And then finally, um, I want to talk about the redirection of money for higher or for work, which is a creative, creative expression of, of, of the divine. And for those of you who are not aware, there is a Sunday, Sunday meditation that's provided by the Lucis Trust, and you can find that meditation on their website. But again, here you see the three aspects. The first being, you have to rightfully ask the divine, and you have to recognize the divine circulatory flow and recognize that there is an infinite abundance. And then you have to have a sense of worthiness. Um, quite often, in, in my view, uh, what's a major blockage of the divine circulatory flow or infinite abundance is people think they're not worthy of that. And you, you have to feel worthy. And, and that's that redemptive aspect. And then you have the creative expression of money as, as it manifests. As the saying goes, money makes things happen. Money solves problems. It certainly does. So those are um, my um, three examples as it relates to the expression of these three aspects, um, you know, as far as day to day. And then what I'd like to do is move into our meditation, our light work. And what I like to do is uh, for everyone to close their eyes and to come together as a group. And we're gonna take three deep breaths. And the first breath is going to relax and quiet the physical body. So let's take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. The second breath is going to quiet the emotional body. Deep breath in. And out. And then the third breath is going to quiet the mind. Deep breath in. And out. Now coming together as a group, we're going to visualize the first triangle of circulating golden light pointed downwards, reaching into manifestation as the father aspect of power and purpose, irradiating the will of God. Let us envision this triangle for one minute. Let us now envision the second triangle of golden radiating light pointing upward towards spirit as the mother aspect of attractive magnetism, the expression of the form aspect. Envision this triangle for one minute.
Now envision the two triangles uniting, merging, creating a golden sixth pointed star, that of father and mother, electricity and magnetism. And through the union or sacred marriage of the two comes the birth of a child, that of light or an expanding refined consciousness, quality or outcome. And envision this six pointed star for one minute, irradiating all consciousness. Sound the mantra, so mote it be, and know that this work is fulfilled. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Rather than asking you any particular questions, since we don't have much time, I thought we could just open it up to the group. Sure. Um, and if you would like to read anything in the chat, please, uh, if there's anything there. I think they're all meditating, so perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> Let me just go ahead and go down. A lot of thank yous. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for your thank yous. <laughs> Just going scrolling down here. Yeah. So, mode it be is in gratitude and love. Yeah. It is. It's a very powerful expression of, of the manifestation. Bear with me, let's see, going down here. Yes, the six point star is solemn seal. That is true. This relates to the third initiation. That is correct, yes as does the five-pointed star. Thank you. May we take your wisdom and share with others. Absolutely. We can download the PowerPoint presentation. Anybody would like that? What's the difference between OM and so mode it be? Actually, they're very similar, just coming from two different traditions. As I understand, and Kathy, if you want to uh, chime in, the Yom uh, is a uh, expression that came from the Hindu faith, uh, the Himalayas, Sanskrit. And uh, so mode it may, so mode it be actually is uh, is very old, and as I understand, comes from the time of Atlantis, which uh, the Russia Crucian tradition. Um, dates back to those times. But they express the same thing, and that is uh, completion and the manifestation of the divine. Love, so be it, thank you. 
Let's see, Michelle, can you expand more upon your last slide with the earth radiating light? Um, that is just the expression of that second aspect. Again, if you go back, back to the polarities of combining um, the spirit with the form or the um, second aspect with the third, you do, get, you do get light. And that was the purpose of our visualization to manifest light by combining the two triangles into a six pointed star. So that's what we were expressing there as a group. Yes, the purpose of the visualization is to radiate the consciousness of humanity, yes. Right, I think that's it. There's one more question. How do you break the ohm into seven sounds? And that, I don't know how to answer that question per se. I don't know if you have any insight on that, Kathy. That's the only question I... No. <clears throat> okay. The father aspect is coming from the solar plexus. So we should focus on the solar plexus when meditating, right? And I would say no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you want to you wanna go, you, you want to work above uh, the solar plexus. Um, not to get into too much detail, but you need to be working with those higher centers that are the head, uh, the throat, and the heart centers. So no, you, you need to stay away from the solar plexus. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> well that's it thank you well thank you so much michelle thank you it was a very um potent meditative alignment you gave to the group on this day so it's really helpful and so let's just take one minute to close by visualizing the planet surrounded by a network of golden triangles. Thank you, everyone.